This is exactly how I went from crashing a $20,000 drone, missing deadlines and delivering inaccurate data, and almost losing my job, to becoming one of the most well-known surveyors online and pursuing a PhD in geodetic engineering. And I'm gonna show you exactly what you need to do in order to be successful without having to spend tens of thousands of dollars and years of your life in university. Hi, I'm Rami Tamimi, and I wanna share with you my experience building the largest survey community online. I wanna share with you my story, not just to share with you how I became a surveyor, but to show you that I understand the struggles and challenges you face as a surveyor. How many of you have heard this before? You get some exposure and experience in surveying, you go to school and you graduate with your four year bachelor's degree and you land your entry level survey job and suddenly you are now a successful surveyor. Does that sound right? Of course not. This is the biggest lie told to surveying and civil engineering students. Because once you enter the market, you're left with missing information and gaps in your education that'll set you up for failure and underperform. There's little to no guidance or mentorship in our industry, and top performing surveyors might be gatekeeping information, resulting in a lack of power shift to the new generation of surveyors. I got my surveying degree and shortly after started working for a large land development company company as an entry level surveyor. While working at the company, I was approached and asked if I'd be interested in learning more about drone technology. The company had landed a large utility mapping contract and they had listened to a seminar where somebody had described drone mapping as being the future of surveying. So I thought this was a great opportunity for me to get some exposure and learn about this new technology. And this was the drone that the company purchased. It was a Matrice 210 RTK. And I thought I would get some kind of training that would teach me how to use this drone drone, except I wasn't given nothing. I was thrown out into the field and told to figure it out. I didn't even have a proper place to charge the batteries or to even store the drone, so it just lived under my desk and I guess I just had to figure out how to use it. It was quite frightening trying to collect accurate data without having the proper mentorship or guidance. And sure enough, I was collecting data that was two to five meters off. Even with the use of ground control points, I couldn't get this drone to give me accurate data. I tried using different types of settings, changing the RTK corrections, and I had all these deadlines I had to meet and I had no idea if I was gonna be able to deliver on time and how was I gonna explain this to my boss and then I crashed the drone. I literally crashed a $20,000 drone. Can you imagine how discouraging that feels? At the time, I blamed myself. This is my fault. I should have been better prepared while I was flying this drone. I should have looked for more resources and tried to ask for more help. I blamed myself. But in reality, I was set up for failure because nobody guided me. Nobody knew anything about this drone. Nobody knew anything about how it relates to traditional surveying. The mentorship was weak and ultimately, I was led to fail. And it's not just me that's gone through this. My own father, who has been a surveyor for 40 years, went through the exact same thing. In the 1980s, my father immigrated to the United States and worked his way up to becoming a survey crew chief. Realizing that he was at a roadblock in his career, he figured that he would have to go back to school, get his surveying degree so that he can then improve in his career and become a professional surveyor. So he went back to school at the age of 45 years old and in December of 2007, he graduated with his bachelor's of science in surveying. I was lucky enough to attend his graduation and we were all so proud of him when he graduated. And now with his degree, he was going to become a licensed surveyor. The company would then take care of him and promote him to becoming a manager, maybe work in business development and become an associate of the company. And well, that didn't happen. He was still just a crew chief. Nobody wanted to help him or mentor him. And in 2008, the economy was collapsing in the United States and ultimately he was laid off from his job. He had spent years of his life achieving this great accomplishment and now he had no job in his 40s and couldn't support his family. So what did he do? He started his own business. In early 2009, he took out a home equity loan on his house to purchase his first total station and GNSS receiver. And this is 2009, so there is not a lot of work, business is slow, and he didn't have enough money to hire employees. So he took me into the field. I was a teenager at the time and I would help my dad after class, on the weekends, and especially in the summers. And maybe I didn't realize it at the time, but he was a true mentor 
teaching me everything I needed to know about field surveying, building a business, collaborating and working with clients, and helping me build my future as a surveyor. He's encouraged me and helped me grow as a professional and has always been the backbone of my success. And I don't think I would be the successful surveyor that I am today without his guidance. And with my knowledge and experience, I was accepted into the PhD program in geodetic engineering over at the Ohio State University. Along with being accepted into a rigorous and competitive program, I was offered a fellowship to teach the Introduction to Surveying course. It was at this time while I was teaching that COVID-19 hit and university campuses locked down, so I had to find a new way to teach my students. So I started to make videos online showcasing different survey concepts for their lab sessions. And today, our surveying community has over 70,000 subscribers and over 5 million views. I've spent years in the field perfecting my skills, whether that's performing boundary or topographic surveys, whether that's using digital levels or a total station, or using drones and GNSS receivers. The experience I've gained has given me a competitive edge in the survey market. Not to mention my academic history, teaching surveying to university students for six years, and making YouTube videos about surveying and geospatial technology for over four years. And if there's one thing that I've learned, it's that there is a lack of resources available to surveyors, and it is my duty to provide resources and help educate as many surveyors as possible. Look, if you're tired of taking courses with unqualified professors or working with surveyors and crew chiefs that want to gatekeep information from you, then I want to introduce you to the Survey School. The Survey School is for highly motivated individuals that want to understand the fundamental principles of surveying while learning how to properly integrate this information to geospatial technology. Inside of the survey school, you will find a community of highly motivated surveying members looking to learn as much as possible about the field of surveying. Whether you're looking to level up your geospatial technology game, or you're looking to learn about the core fundamental principles of traditional surveying, the survey school has all of the resources you need in order to become a successful surveyor. This school is for those that want to become experts in the surveying field. They want to learn all the aspects of surveying, whether that's traditional land surveying or advanced geodetic surveying. Because the the more information you know, the more well-rounded you are as a surveyor, the more successful you are going to be in your career. Look, people look at me and they just see the happy ending. They see all the flashy technology that I use. They see me attending conferences and traveling around the world. They see me having a loving family and a support system. But the reality is I spent years of my life building my professional reputation, spending endless hours working in the field, working in the office, doing research in order to achieve the life that I have. Look, if you're a surveyor who's happy making 60 or $70,000 a year, then that's good for you. But that wasn't enough for me. No, I wanted to attain that high level paying job. I wanted to make $200,000 a year. I wanted to make a name for myself. I wanted to understand how all this equipment worked. I did it for me because I wanted to be a top performing surveyor. And that's why I'm building this school and this community because I don't want you to have to spend years of your life getting a PhD and spending tens of thousands of dollars like I did. And the way I'm gonna do it is with seven phases. In phase one, we will go over the principles and practices of surveying. You'll have access to my online course, Introduction to Surveying, which has several modules going over fundamental principles of surveying, showing you how surveying came to exist, the standards and procedures that we use in the industry, as well as some basic mathematical calculations like leveling and traversing. In phase two, you'll be introduced to construction and route surveying. In this course, you will see our involvement in civil engineering and construction industries, how us surveyors lay out design plans in the real world and collaborate with different industries in order to bring whether it's buildings, bridges, roads into real life. We'll go through all the coordinate geometry calculations as well as calculating cut and fill elevations. In phase three, we will go over geospatial technology. This course is designed to introduce you to geospatial technology, which includes remote sensing, photo photogrammetry and geodesy. In phase four, we will go over the legal principles of surveying. If you're looking to become a professional surveyor and obtain your survey license, then you need to have a good understanding of the legal practices of surveying. This includes boundary surveys, Alta land title surveys,
surveys, easement exhibits, or any type of work that requires you to record your survey, whether that's with a municipality or with the court as legal evidence. In phase five, you will begin to use AutoCAD Civil 3D. Civil 3D is an industry standard used by civil engineers, architects, and yes, survey engineers. And it is critical that surveyors understand how to use Civil 3D. You will learn the basic survey commands and how to build a drawing using a survey you did in the field. Phase six will be innovations in the survey industry. And this includes merging the two worlds together, merging traditional survey methods with geospatial technology. 3D data is collected and presented in a variety of ways. And as a surveyor, you're gonna understand what digital twin modeling is, NERF and Gaussian splatting, and how we use artificial intelligence and machine learning to analyze spatial data and provide us with statistical analysis, quality control, and even data that we can use in order to make our work more efficient. And finally, phase seven, your professional and business development. We're all on a different path in surveying. Some of us want to become professional surveyors, acquiring our survey license by taking the FS, PS, and state-specific PS exams. Some of us want to be innovators in the tech industry, understanding geospatial technology and innovating new ways of collecting data. And some people want to become business owners and run and operate an LLC. They want to hire people and train them and run an entire organization. Some want to become professors and do research and teach at universities. We all have different paths. And in this phase, we will identify your path and find the necessary steps you need to take in order to achieve your goal. And with these seven phases, you will be transformed as a surveyor, providing you all of the knowledge that you will need. And you didn't have to spend years of your life or tens of thousands of dollars in order to get to that point. As you engage with other members in the community, you could rank up as a leader in the community and top performing leaders will receive prizes such as free membership periods, free one-on-one -on -one consultation calls with me, survey shirts and apparel, and free survey equipment like GNSS receivers. That's how big some of these prizes are. I wanna keep the community fun and engaging and give back to the top performing members in the survey school. This is a roadmap community, which means that it's only going to get better. And as the school gets better, I'm going to be raising the price. And anybody that joins now is going to be locked in at that price forever. Now the survey school is not for everybody. If you're someone that is happy with just pushing buttons and you don't really care about how survey control is achieved, then the school is not for you. If you're old school and you just like to use your total station and you don't understand, care, or trust any of the new geospatial technology, then again, the school is not for you. But if you are an innovator and someone that wants to be at the top of their game, having a full understanding of every aspect of surveying, then make sure you click on that button below and I will see you inside of the survey school.